YouTube, Chrome Freak here. We're going to do a complete and thorough review, or as thorough as I can get, on the Set Me 7.62 by 51 battle rifle. This rifle was designed by Ludwig Vorg Rimker. I <laughs> sure hope I'm getting that right. And uh, he was a German engineer who had actually moved to Spain and got with a company, or not the company, it's actually a government entity called SETME. And SETME stands for Center for Techni Technical Studies of Special Materials. It is a government design and developmental establishment. Although it is involved in many projects, it's famous for its small arms research. Hence the name SETME Battle Rifle. That's where they got the name. They also developed the SETME C2, a 9mm submachine gun, and the SETME Ameli, pretty famous, a light machine gun that is chambered in 556 by 45 And um, with that, well, let me get rolling here. The weight of this rifle, it's pretty heavy. It's 10 pounds. By the way, let's take out the magazine. We'll do a quick safety check on it. And we're all clear. I think it's a beautiful rifle myself. Um, let's go over the stats and then we'll get into a little bit of, about the rifle itself and some of the uh, controversy about it. And hopefully I'll have time to get into some other things here. And if not, I, I plan on doing a complete detailed strip of this rifle. And what you're looking at right here is a parts kit, a complete parts kit minus the receiver. And that's actually how these were delivered into this country. And if you look on this rifle, it actually says by Century Arms. And it says made in the USA. So you don't have to worry about anything being 922 or compliant. Because um, it is made, considered made in the USA because they were shipped in, as you see, cut in pieces with a blowtorch. And you have every, like I said, you have everything here minus the receiver. And I, I can't wait to go over some of this stuff with you actually because, like I said, there's a lot of controversy about this rifle. And most of it is, as usual, you get a couple of... Um, rifles that aren't good and I'm not trying to defend Century Arms believe me but you get a couple of people who, uh, who get a couple of lemons and they get talking and you write something on the internet and things just spread and they blow up out of proportion I'll give you an example I got a good friend of mine who also owns one of these rifles right here he had nothing but problems with it I mean tons of problems so I finally got with him and we took the rifle down and believe it or not he had never taken his rifle down we got in there, inside the trigger housing, they packed this thing from, from Century, I guess, when they built them. So full of grease, you would not believe. And the same thing inside the trunnion and the bolt carrier group. I mean, this thing was just packed in grease, and from all the shooting he had done in there, well, everything was just filthy. Well, of course it's not going to work. We cleaned it up, lightly oiled everything up, and that rifle is perfect, man. There's nothing wrong with it. It shoots just like this one. So sometimes guys just blow things out of proportion. Like I said, I'm not defending Sentry. They put a lot of rifles together where the sights are tampered, the front or the rear, and, and many other problems. Problems with um, bolt, bolts, actually the back of the bolts being grinded so you get the headspace here, and I'm gonna explain headspace on this rifle compared to some other semi-automatic rifles. It's a little bit different how you measure your headspace, and we'll go over that. But the effective, actually, let's go ahead and like, the total length is 40 and a half inches. It's got a 17 and 3 quarter, 17.7 inch barrel. A lot of guys, you're going to hear them say it's got a 16 inch barrel. What they're doing is they're taking their tape measure and they're measuring from the back of the foregrip right there. And it's a, it's a, it'll be a 16 inch barrel minus the, the suppressor. Well, that's, that's not. I mean, the barrel is up into the trunnion, you know, an inch and 3 quarters or whatever it is. And the total length of the barrel, and here's a brand new barrel, by the way, that comes with the parts kit. And there you go, 17 and 3 quarter inches. And that's what it is. The rate of fire was five to 600 rounds a minute. This was developed to be a fully automatic machine gun, light machine gun. And that's where it shined. And it shined for many, many years for Spain. And in the G3 model for Ger West Germany for that matter. Uh, it's, it, it takes a 20 round box magazine right here. It also has a 50 round drum. I have never personally seen one, but I know they're around. The effective range was 100 to 400 meters, although with a scope and a 7.62 by 51 NATO round here, 308 round, we know you could reach out and touch something 
well past the thousand meter mark. But the effective range on this has a fully automatic submachine gun, small lightweight machine gun, was 100 to 400 meters. Um, the front sight is a hooded post, and it's actually, a lot of people don't realize, it's an adjustable front sight. It's got a fixed rear, it's an aperture that you could spin, and it's got 100, 200, 300, 400 meter apertures on it. The front sight can be actually raised and lowered, and it can be adjusted for windage. Now I'm going to show you something that, that Century Arms did do. This right here is part of the receiver on an original Setney, as you can see, in the parts kit. By the way, the T was semi-auto, semi safety, and then fully automatic right there. You cannot take this and just pop this into this gun and make it a fully automatic machine gun, nor do you want to try because I wouldn't want to go to jail. Um, I'm sure there's ways to do it, but um, we're not even going to speak of those. Anyway, this is a piece of the receiver right here with an original Model C set me sight. And as you can see, it is welded on identically to the way Sentry did it. However, Sentry just spot welded it in four places instead of a solid weld all the way across. Also, if you could see, the sight is down flush on top of the receiver. The receiver at the point of where the sight is is actually flat on the old original receiver. On the new ones from Century, these stamp receivers, it's rounded. So they did make some guns where they didn't get the sight on there perfect, and it's canted a little bit to one side or the other. And anybody knows, you know, you're a, a thousand, a couple thousandths of an inch off here, what, 400 meters or whatever, you're way off, I promise you. So as you can see, you also got to take into consideration the spot welding they did here. It's almost an eighth of an inch off the receiver. And on the original set me, it was designed flat on top of the receiver. And that's something you got to remember when you're sighting this thing in and you're adjusting your front sight and all that. This is actually higher than the gun was designed, the rifle was designed to be. So, anyway, the G3 model, actually they started making this, they started producing this in 1957. And it was with the Spanish government, excuse me, I can't remember everything, I have to look at some of the things. I believe all the way up until 1986, I'm wanting to say, 81, 86, it was, it was in with them all the way up until 1986 and it was replaced by basically the same rifle except it was in 5.56 by 45, by 39 I believe, let me make sure of that too, by 45, 5.56 by 45. And that stayed, I think, for about 10 years, and it by itself now is replaced by the H and K G3 GE. So that's, from what I understand, what they're currently running today. Although there are some Spanish, uh, Spanish special ops, and probably German too, I'm not sure, that still use this rifle. And I know there's some small third world countries that still use this battle rifle right here. Anyway, the smartest thing I did when I bought this rifle, by the way, and I got this rifle from somebody I knew. I think I paid a couple hundred dollars for it. I really got it at a great price. And when I opened it up the first time, first thing I do, when I don't care if I buy a brand new gun or I buy a used gun, first thing I do is take the gun down. Because you don't know what's in it, you don't know what's been done, and sure as heck, like I said, it was full of grease. I clean that all. I've had no problems with this rifle whatsoever. None, zero. And I've shot, by the way, this is a military surplus round. But I have shot 308 Winchester. You'll go. To, you'll get on these boards. Um, you know, you type in "set me 308" and it, on Google, and it's going to bring up a lot of gun gun talk boards and forums. And you got a lot of guys saying you can't shoot the 308 Winchester through there. Yes, you can. Never had a problem with it. And let me show you what it says right here in the instruction manual. Right on the very front, it does tell you 308 NATO. However, inside caliber. 308 Winchester, right there. 308 Win. So I've never had a problem shooting it. These these barrels are fluted inside, and I hope you can see this. I'm not sure if you can. All it is is grooves that are cut into the barrel, lengthwise, and it assists in extraction in the initial extraction. And when it's gone, when you fire this thing and it ejects that that that, that spent round. I'm here to tell you, man, that thing comes out of here with some velocity. It'll shoot at 30, 40 feet away. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> you don't want to be standing just next to the guy who's shooting one of these rifles because you get one upside the head and it's going to hurt you. 
Anyway, let's take a look on, on what Century did do to this rifle. They cleaned up the wood a bit, as you can see the old wood over here. They made it look really nice. I think they did a, a great job, at least on this rifle they did. And on a few of them I know, people I know who have them, they did. They did change the original flash suppressor. This is an original from the parts kit, which I probably will put back on this rifle. I don't see why I can't. They took the bayonet lug off. As you can see, the bayonet lug also came with a cleaning kit. It actually stuck into the plug right here, which is just held in by one little screw. Pull that plug out. I'm going to go ahead and install that and, and probably get a bayonet for it. Like I said, this, I, in fact, just here recently, I let a, a buddy of mine, because I haven't had the money or time here in the last few weeks, unfortunately, to really go shooting. And uh, I, wanted to, I wanted somebody else to shoot this gun. I actually wanted to shoot.